Julius Jones supporters urge Governor Stitt to grant clemency while the Howell family still believes the verdict is right. We'll show you both sides. Chilly weather blows into the state and OU students, it's time to vote for the next student body representatives. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Kaylee Tinglestad. And I'm Kayla Davis. We begin with the continued fight for Julius Jones' life. Jones is a former OU student who was convicted of murder in 1999. For more than 20 years, he and his supporters have maintained his innocence. Yesterday, the Oklahoma Pardon and Parole Board recommended he receive clemency. His execution is still set for November 18th, unless the governor intervenes. Tonight, his supporters are still fighting for his life. Will Blessing shows us what they are doing now. Cheers and tears of celebration from those who support Julius Jones as the Pardon and Parole Board recommended clemency yesterday in a 3-1 to one vote. Lots of tears, but not sad tears, happy tears. Um, just really proud of Julius and for standing his ground and speaking his truth with so much strength and courage. And uh, since then, I've been really excited, but also very determined to continue this fight and bring him home. I felt real good, but still kind of a little sad because I know this is not in the beginning. But it's not over yet. Now the decision rests in Governor Stitt's hands. Supporters are continuing to urge Governor Stitt to grant clemency through phone calls, holding vigils at the Oklahoma History Center, and by writing letters. One supporter is going even further, running for mayor of Oklahoma City. Jimmy Lawson, Julius Jones's best friend from childhood, announced his candidacy four months ago. Thanks, or three of the things that motivated me to do this was looking at how the system has done my best friend in 22 years and all the amazingly horrific other Julius Jones in the system. I thought, man, there's some things in the system that's never been addressed uh, from a high level and a local level. So I thought, why are we going to talk about it? Let's be about it. Elections for Oklahoma City Mayor are in February, but for now, the focus is on Julius. Will Blessing, OU Nightly. The group says it welcomes additional support and hopes that those who support Jones will contact the governor's office to make their voices heard. Paul Howell is the man who was murdered in this case. His family insists the jury got the verdict right nearly 20 years ago, and several of them spoke out at yesterday's clemency hearing. And vote no to the clemency of Julius Jones, for if you do not, then the entire state of Oklahoma should be afraid. Please do not let the lies outweigh the truth here. The family says Julius Jones did murder Paul Howell in the summer of 1999. Paul Howell lived in Edmond and is survived by his two daughters who are witnesses to the murder. During the clemency hearing, they called Jones a sociopath citing his criminal history and violent letters written to his girlfriend. The next step is for the governor to make a decision. We know right now he is in Mexico on a trip regarding the new consulate to open in Oklahoma City. It's not known will, when he will make an announcement. And Michaela Smith is outside to tell us about the cooler weather. Michaela, how is it feeling out there? We're sitting much cooler than we've seen in the last few days, even the last few months. We haven't had highs in the 40s since February 20th of this year. So even as a start for November as well, we're sitting about 15 to 20 degrees cooler than what we would normally see. Highs today across the state were in the 40s. We're currently still sitting in those 40s for the majority of the state. 50s down there to the southeast, but we have some strong winds coming from the north, which are wind chill values. Our feel like temperatures are barely creeping out of the 30s into the 40s here in Oklahoma, in the metro area as well, in the 40s, low 40s here in Norman. And people felt that as they walked to class today. I saw a ton of people bundled up in jackets, sweatshirts, leggings. So it's definitely been cool out there. But luckily, this is going to last for just a couple more days. We are going to have some rain chances late to tonight to tomorrow. And then we start that warm up as we go into this weekend and the beginning of next week back into the 70s. So Hannah's going to have that full fat forecast for you. So stick with us. We'll have more coming up. Back to you guys.
Thanks, Michaela. The SGA presidential campaign trail began last weekend, and today is the first day students can vote for their future student body president. OU Knightley's Maddie D'Addario meets with both teams to learn more. The Liza, Kufo, and Castellano Hepburn campaigns are this year's SGA presidential hopefuls. For Zach Liza and Denzel Kufo, the acronym CARE is the main focus of their platform. We need leaders that, that can act. Um, and Denzel and I, you know, have a record of, you know, providing tangible results. And that's exactly what our platform seeks to, you know, advance. That's our goal, to be the voice for the students, make sure that they have as uh, unique as a OU experience as we've had. As for Angelora Castellano and her partner, Samantha Hepburn, the acronym FIRST encompasses their five big platform points. And we really kind of tried to find a common theme between all of our ideas and our goals and like why we were doing this. And the thing that came up every single time was putting students first. Along with sharing about their platforms, both sets of candidates also mentioned how this year's campaign trail was shortened by nearly two weeks compared to years past. Well, when we heard the news that we only had 10 days compared to the usual month, the first thing that came to our mind was the fact that we didn't really feel as though it placed students first. Um, students did not and do not have enough time to make a really informed decision. The shortened campaign trail even brought the candidates together in hopes to change the rule. Um, and actually, you know, both campaigns came together. Um, you know, we had several phone calls and we actually released a joint statement to um, the SGA leadership talking about, you know, this is outrageous. Candidates will continue down the campaign trail until voting polls close. For OU Nightly, Maddie D'Addario. If you are an OU student wanting to cast your vote, visit elections.ou.edu. Voting is already open and will close tomorrow at 7 p.m. Facebook has been making many changes after internal documents were leaked to the Securities and Exchange Commission. Colby Terrell has the latest on their newest change and the rest of today's headlines from around the country. Thank you, Kayla. With all the backlash Facebook is receiving, they've decided to get rid of their facial recognition software. The company, now known as Meta, says they also plan to delete the data already gathered through this technology associated with billions of faces. Facebook is not getting rid of the software altogether, though, and it may still use it in other products besides the Facebook app. Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Henry Ruggs is charged with driving under the influence, resulting in death. First responders arrived at around 3.39 this morning to a rear-end collision. Firefighters found the victim dead inside their car, and that person has not yet been identified. Police say Ruggs remained on scene and was showing signs of impairment before being taken to the hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. And Virginia elected their first woman of color lieutenant governor. That's it from the News Center. Back to you guys at the desk. Tonight, kids younger than 12 are now one step closer to getting their COVID vaccines. We'll tell you the latest on the CDC meeting this afternoon. Plus, this time of year, many of us might be falling behind on our sleep. But could the lack of sleep be causing issues with our mobility? We'll explain the latest research, research study on the effects of sleep deprivation. Almost 2 million Oklahomans are now fully vaccinated, and 375,000 children could be eligible for their first dose soon. The CDC has given the green light today to vaccinate kids as young as 5 years old. Caitlin Deggs has the latest on that meeting today in HealthBeat. Yeah, Kaylee, the CDC Advisory Committee has just voted to recommend Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine and children ages 5 to 11 years old. The vaccine advisors voted 14 to 0 in favor of recommending the vaccine. The decision now lies in the hands of CDC Director Dr. Wachelle Walensky. This comes after the FDA authorized the Pfizer vaccine for emergency use in children ages 5 to 11 last Friday. Many clinics have already received shipments of the vaccine for kids and plan to start giving the shots tomorrow or even possibly possibly tonight. The dose for kids at the Pfizer shot is one third of the dose used for those ages 12 and older. The Supreme Court hears arguments on a controversial Texas law that bars most abortions after six weeks. The law says that abortions cannot be performed after a fetal heartbeat is detected. Instead of discussing if the law violates the Roe versus Wade Supreme Court decision, the court will focus on the way the law was created in the Texas legislature. The court is hearing another abortion case next month, a challenge to Mississippi's 15 week ban where the court's precedent and Roe versus Wade will come into play. Not getting enough sleep is known to cause health problems such as weight gain and anxiety, but a new study finds that it can also affect how you walk. 
Researchers studied waking and sleeping patterns of college students in Brazil. Students stayed awake all night and walked to a beat on a treadmill. After that, students had difficulty keeping rhythm. Walking, which was once believed to be an automatic process, is actually influenced by the brain. And a lack of sleep can impact your body's ability to avoid obstacles and keep balance. And guys, the latest research study on the Johnson & Johnson vaccine shows that it is 73% effective in reducing COVID infections. This is according to JAMA Network Open. Back to you. Thanks, Caitlin. A new business is coming to Campus Corner, and it could make Parents Weekend a lot easier. Hannah, I'm glad I grabbed my heavy jacket this morning, but why need my rain boots too? Yeah, you might need those for tomorrow morning. We could see some showers overnight. I'll have the timing for that after the break as well as when we could see those average temperatures climbing back up. Stick around. Welcome back to OU Nightly and welcome to November. It's been very chilly out there and we haven't seen a day this cold since February of this year. That's 255 days. It's in the 40s out there right now and we are seeing some light drizzle. That's because we have this cold air behind that cold front that pushed through and this slight disturbance is giving us that chance for some rainfall this evening. And this is going to stick around throughout the rest of this week. We'll be seeing that cooler weather right now. Those northerly winds feeling pretty gusty out there 10 miles per hour here in Norman. Some of us feeling a bit stronger and the wind chill is what's really feeling cool out there. We're in the low 40s. Some of us in El Reno seeing 30 degree wind chills, so certainly feeling a lot cooler than we have been in our dew points very high across the state. That's why we're seeing some drizzle across central Oklahoma. And if you look out over the skyline right now, just some dense clouds and seeing a little bit of that drizzle. So certainly dreary out there, but some of us to the north widespread rain showers across northern Oklahoma and we'll see that continue to build this evening. But to our east, we do have Freeze watch is in effect. We could see those extended down slightly into the southern parts of Oklahoma, but for the most part, it's just going to be rain. We'll see widespread showers overnight tonight around 1 a.m. Seeing those really start to gather, but these will push out overnight into tomorrow morning, mostly just seeing that cloud cover and those cooler temperatures that will be sticking around. Now, in terms of accumulation, we could see up to three quarters of an inch of rainfall in some places. OKC over, seeing over a half an inch of rainfall, so certainly some significant rain as we head into the evening hours. Now the rest of this week, seeing those cooler temperatures about 20 degrees below average, but as we head into the end of the week, we'll start to see it warm back up. Normally we're around the 70s for November and we'll finally reach that again as we head into the start of next week. But if you're looking for those fall colors, we're almost there. We're near peak foliage here in Oklahoma. As we head into the rest of the week, we'll see that start to deepen. And if you want to head out there this weekend, could be a good time to do so. For the rest of this evening, cooling off significantly, we'll see those showers gathering and our temperatures across the state with those northerly winds will be in the 40s. Some of us in the panhandle seeing those temperatures in the 30s and we do have that rainfall for the rest of the week. Cold and cloudy tomorrow before we see 70s as we head into the beginning of next week, guys. Thanks, Hannah. A big change is coming to Campus Corner as construction for a new hotel is underway. Hotel Noun is located at the intersection of Asp and Boyd, making it the closest hotel to campus when they open their doors. Currently, their nearest one is three miles away. The owner of Hotel Noun is hoping that the opening of the hotel will bring new life to Campus Corner as it is something the area hasn't seen before. We were 100% um, focused on getting a property near the university. Um, for this hotel. We weren't interested in doing it anyplace else in Norman um, because it was an underserved market. The grand opening for Hotel Noun is set for August 11th in the summer of 2022. Carly, it looks like we have a sooner packed show. That's right. I'll give you the latest on Superman Caleb Williams' newest accolade. And plus, men's basketball got their season tipped off, and we'll hear what Porter Moser has to say. Stick around. Sports is next.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Carly Murray and it's time for sports. We've got a show full of Sooner sports, so let's get started. Not only was Caleb Williams named Big 12 Offensive Player of the Week, but he was also named the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback of the Week after a phenomenal performance against Texas Tech. Williams set an OU true freshman record with 402 passing yards and became only one of three players in OU history to throw six TD passes with no interceptions. Kaylee Tinglestad and Will Blessing catch us up on highlights from the game. Sooners win in remarkable fashion against the Red Raiders, beating them by 31 points, 52 to 21. Now, Kaylee, what's the biggest thing you saw from the Sooner team? I'm going to have to say the Sooners really stepped it up compared to last weekend against KU. A lot less penalties this weekend than last weekend. Everything seemed more fine-tuned. There was a lot of weapons on the offense and the defense. You saw players come back. DTY came back. More of a silent game from DTY this week. DJ Graham had a great game as well. Marvin Mims also on the offensive side of the ball really stepped it up. Haven't seen too much of him since Texas, but this weekend Marvin Mims was present and he had a great game. And another thing, quarterbacks. Will? Absolutely. Interesting thing from this game, the return of Spencer Rattler to the field, put it in the fourth quarter. Williams, fantastic performance throughout the first three quarters. But Rattler also looked pretty solid, and the offense was fairly productive, especially Marcus Major also made a return to the field. And it really allowed, you know, the offense kept producing even though we were at the backups. And it was really good to see fans cheering for Rattler as he came out on the field. It could have gone two ways, but it went towards a good way. And Spencer had a great game when he was in for those two drives. Absolutely. Overall, great game, great atmosphere. That's all we have. For Kaylee Tinglestad, I'm Will Blessing. On last night's episode of Sooner Sports Path, the crowd gave Spencer Rattler a standing ovation. Sooner fans still love and appreciate their OG quarterback. And Porter Moser and the Sooners had quite the debut against Roger State last night at the LNC in an exhibition game. Oklahoma defeated Roger State 106-57 and held the lead for all but 18 seconds. The Sooners shot 69.9% from the field and held Roger State to just under 41%. In his postgame interview, Porter Moser praised his defense's effort but says the work isn't done yet. Overall, I, I liked everybody's mentality defensively. Um, I liked their communication. Uh, we just got to get better. It's November, November 1st. We just got to get better. But I, I liked what I saw so far. And OU Knightley's very own Liv Wallback got in on the action at the game last Saturday, but not in the way you'd expect. Watch as Tech defenders grab Brooks and throw him right towards Liv as she stood on the sideline in the blue vest. Thankfully, Liv needed no medical attention and is back at work with us. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't want to be Liv in that situation. Yeah, I definitely saw that happen on Saturday during the game. <laughs> she was right in the action, that's for sure. Yep. <laughs> if you love mac and cheese, then this next deal is for you. Find out how you can taste the cheesy flavors of Kraft when we come back. I'm Stone Weber at the OU Nightly Update Desk. 20 people were killed and 30 more were injured at a military hospital explosion in Kabul. Gunfire followed the explosions and Taliban officials said special forces arrived on the scene. Witnesses said they saw a number of Afghan affiliates of ISIS enter the hospital and as of now, there has been no immediate claim of responsibility. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks Stone. Kraft Mac and Cheese has been getting crafty when it comes to mac and cheese flavors. The company is introducing an exclusive flavors club where members can taste test Kraft's new season blends. Members will also have access to clothing based on different flavors. To make the deal exclusive, becoming a member is a multi-step process that includes signing on Kraft's website. And Hannah, is there any chance for warmer weather in the future? And should we expect more rain? Yeah, Kayla and Kaylee, we will see that warmer weather by the end of this week, but for now, this cool weather is going to stick around, and most of that rain right now is still to the north of us, but you can see it's kind of starting to make its way southward, and we do have that rain south of the Red River right now. Overnight tonight, we'll see that become more widespread across the state, but for tomorrow, 
looking at a very similar day. We'll have cloud cover and a little bit of rainfall in the morning. By Thursday, we'll start to see the sun coming out again. Friday into the 60s. By the weekend, we'll start to reach mid 60s and sunshine again. But if you look at next week, we will finally be back into the 70s around our average as we head into next Monday. So guys, it will be nice by then. Thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of Journalism and Mass Communication on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Watch OU Nightly live tomorrow at 4.30 and have a safe and warm night. Good night.